What's going on YouTube? I think I need to start changing my reviews on boxing to late, but never too late because lately I haven't really been putting them up with enough time gap for people to see these before the fights. So today is the 27th. The fight will be Saturday. This is Tuesday. So as you can see, not a lot of time. But anyways, Joshua versus Parker. Who do I think would win? Now, I wanted to see some things play out before the fight to really give a true analysis of who I see winning. And after seeing the stare down of today, I believe AJ is going to walk away with this. The one thing Parker had going for him is a granite chin, meaning that when you have a hard hitter who's going to be there, who can take punches, is great against a guy who can punch and will probably get tired later on if pushed. Now, AJ's stamina has been looking better. He has lost a little weight, which don't really agree with because when you're known for power and you start taking away weight, you lose some power. So if you're a big puncher, the last thing you want to do is lose weight, especially if it's not fat weight like AJ and it's muscle weight. But to AJ's advantage, looking at Parker, he has lost way too much weight. He's already the smaller man. Now, this is what drives me crazy with boxing trainers. They believe being small, sleek, have less muscle, less oxygen ate up is the better way to go. And sometimes it is. But it's not when you're against a guy who is getting more and more skilled with every fight, more and more skilled with every training, more and more skilled every day of his life. And he has really like made this his craft and dedicated what he needs to dedicate to improve. Joshua is so much of a better fighter now than when he was when he fought Charles Martin, when he fought Dillian White. He has really improved a lot with his technique. He's gotten more tight. His timing's getting better, and I just see a much more well-rounded. He does have flaws. His chin is still suspect, but we're about to touch on that. Who do I see winning this fight? With seeing the weight loss that Parker has, Parker is a tough guy, but if AJ can, can touch him, and I believe he can, then excuse me. <coughs> That will be in the video because I do not edit like all these other people. What you see is what you get and I'm off the fly. So I just bless, bless me. Sorry. Back to it. I think AJ is going to whittle Parker down and I'm looking at a late round knockout, later round knockout for AJ or Parker's going to run so much that he's just going to get out scored. Now, here's my problem. I was giving Parker a really good shot at beating AJ, but seeing all the weight that he has cut, here's what's going to end up happening. He's not going to have the mass anymore to, to move AJ and to have that possibility to move around him in the center of the ring to take control. Then when you start losing weight, you have less mass. When you have less mass, your neck normally gets smaller. Now, a lot of people don't realize it, but this right here, this is the, the shock absorber for punches, for any hit really to the head. Your neck absorbs, especially your traps. All that comes into play when you're getting popped that'll absorb a lot of the damage. And he's shrunk up a lot. He looks small. And you don't want to go against a hard hitter, a heavy guy, small. That's no, I know they're trying to go for speed, agility, quicker hands and all of that, but you got to be able to hurt your opponent and they're trying to play out Parker like he's this devastating puncher and he's not. Even if he somehow knocks out AJ, that just is a testament to AJ not really having the chin that he's more of a glass cannon than anything because since Parker has stepped up, he has been void of power. His last three fights shows no type of devastating power. And I'm not saying he can't hit harder than the average guy, but we're not talking about average people. We are talking about top tier level boxers. And on that scale, he is lacking a lot of punching power. And he definitely does not have one punch power. So if he's going to beat AJ, he's going to have to beat him on cards. And being that this is in England, he's really going to have to beat him on cards because we all know how judging works. 
the home guy is always going to have home field advantage. And especially with it being a champion, the rule of thumb is if you're fighting a champion, you have to beat that champion. Now, not only is AJ the champion, but now it's in AJ's backyard. So he's got two things going for him to really mean that Parker has to solidify this to, to a astronomical landslide. Like, it has to be so blatant. That there cannot be any close rounds, and I just don't see it happening. What I see happening is Parker's going to come out fast, but being that he's small, he's going to get hit. And as he gets hit, he's going to start becoming slower in his attack because he's going to get more timid. And yes, that jaw is strong and it has held up, but he hasn't been hit by nobody like AJ. And I, I, I just don't see as much weight as he lost. His body's going to be weak. He might feel good. I'm telling you, like, you can lose weight whenever you, you're bigger and you feel great. You feel really good, but you don't really know how much you lost till you push to have to test that body. And when you start changing stuff, especially before something really important, you're doing more harm than you are good. Yeah, you might be able to go a little bit faster, last a little bit longer, but what you lose is not worth what you gain. And then, and to me, looking at him, he's done lost too much. And this isn't even going to be a close fight to me. What I see is AJ's going to use that timing as long as he stays coy. Because here's the thing. What beats power? Speed. What beats speed? Timing. And if that timing comes with power, speed is screwed. And I see a lot of good counterpunching with AJ. AJ... He's always got his eyes, kind of like Mayweather, which made Mayweather great with the Philly Chef. He's always watching. His eyes don't really close. So even though he does have a suspect chin, he's always looking for that counter, that little move. And he's really good at little movements, which is great because when you're a bigger guy, which I disagree with him losing weight because he's going to lose power. And you don't want to get him light enough to where he loses that one punch, knock you the fuck out power. You know, that, that that's the one thing. So the little movements that he does is what you want to see from a guy who's muscle bound is what you want to see because the smaller the movement, the less energy you burn. So I really think that unless Parker comes out like a, like a bee or a gnat, I would say more like a gnat and just swarms them all around and AJ just can't touch him, I, I, I don't think... Parker will be able to do much to him with the weight loss and, and already being void of that real punching power. You know, punches and bunches can hurt more than one single punch. But then again, when you're punching with pillows, it doesn't really matter, especially against a guy who can take who, who's taken hard punches from hard hitters, which AJ has, especially with Klitschko. I mean, he's definitely taking hard punches. Now, his chin didn't hold up because he fell, but he did get back up, which shows hard. So if he can get back up from a devastating puncher, likelihoods of a powder puncher really rocking him are slim unless it's just an accumulation from AJ not being able to do anything. But once again, like I said, getting back to the point, so I'm not talking in circles because it feels like I am. I do not believe Parker is going to be able to stay away from him, being that he's shorter, Arms are smaller in length, what I mean by smaller. They're not as long, body frame not as long, and now that he's lost so much weight, he's not going to be able to control that center of the ring. He's going to get pushed back, and I believe AJ is good enough at cutting off the ring, and Parker's not skilled enough to get away because a lot of his fights he likes to press to. So now that he's going to have to fight off the back foot, I don't really see him being as, as good off the back foot. Yeah, he's had some impressive knockouts and turnarounds coming off the back foot, but that was against low-tier opponents, which is like it's like Kimbo Slice knocking people out in the streets. It looks great, but whenever you step up, it doesn't mean anything. You can look like a god against trash, but when you're not against trash anymore, that God status gets tested by other people who are on that God status who belong there. And he's not going to beat AJ off the back foot. He's just not going to be able to generate the power to keep AJ off of him. And he's not good at getting away. He's not like Mayweather where Mayweather hit against the ropes and bow, hit you with the left hook and spin out and boom, hit you with the straight right. 
Parker doesn't have those types of moves. So, once again, in all conclusion, I see that Parker's going to come aggressive fast, and he might have that speed for the first couple of rounds, but AJ's going to learn his timing. He's going to counterpunch, break him down, and you're going to see Parker get more timid because I think he's going to get hurt worse than he's ever been hurt, not because of AJ, but because of how much weight he's lost. He's going he's gonna to feel things that he's never felt before in a way he's never felt them before. And this was just the wrong fight for him to change up his body. You don't, they always say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And on the flip side, AJ, you also need to quit losing weight. You're a big dude. You're a strong dude. Don't get rid of what your strength is. You're not a small guy. You're not a speedy fighter. You're not, if you let them change your size for more endurance, then you're going to lose what makes you great. Your biggest asset is your weight and your power. If you lose that, then you're going to have problems when you're getting against guys who are like, say, a Deontay Wilder, who's always been small, who relies on speed, and who has a lot of power with that speed. And I'll give him that, even though I don't think he has one-punch devastating power with the Ortiz. I think that was a real good display. We'll get into that, to that later. But I do believe that AJ... And, and Wilder will happen. What I will say to conclude this is that Wilder, do not fight Dillian White. Not to say Dillian White doesn't deserve a shot because I believe Dillian White has showed tremendous improvement. But all he, Hearns is trying to do is, is get a double paycheck. Hearns wants to feed you White. And even if, if you lose to White, it doesn't matter because he owns White and AJ. So AJ and White will fight. And that's another paycheck. If AJ loses to Wilder, then Wilder doesn't per se have to fight White. And if he beats, if, if, if Wilder beats White, then he's got to fight White. Then AJ, two paychecks versus just fighting AJ winning and saying, nah, I'm not, I'm not fucking with England no more. I'm going to beat their best. I'm staying in the States. So it's to me, it's a double paycheck. That's all that is. It's not that Hearn per se believes that Dillian White could win or AJ would lose. It's just that he wants to get two paychecks. And either way it goes for him, he's going to get two paychecks by getting Wilder to fight Dillian. Because like I said, if, if White loses, then he still gets AJ versus Wilder. If White wins, then he still gets White versus AJ. Instead of either getting White and AJ or when it's not as big of a fight or, or Wilder and AJ when it still will be the same size fight whether Wilder beats Dillian or not. It doesn't matter. So anyways... Back to the point, because I get sidetracked so much because I don't edit this, because this is off the brain. Look at AJ counterpunching, breaking them down, late rounds, knockout. Um, if a knockout's going to come, being that Parker's not two-way drain, I see it, the fight really starting to tilt late in the ninth, early 10th, I'll say 11th. It might even be a 12th round knockout, but I'm Feeling 9th to 11th for this fight for AJ Stoppage. Thank y'all for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed the review. If y'all need me to add more details of fight styles, how I've done movement before with them, let me know. Help me improve this. Even though I don't put videos up as quickly as I should, I'm going to try to do better. I've just been at work, gone, everything. Life's crazy. And yeah, just let me know how I can improve this. Appreciate it. Peace, y'all.